Uh, the next topic would be the descending pathways of the spinal cord. Uh, one major thing is uh, what I want to show you as a schematic drawing that we have upper motor neuron in the cortex, upper motor neuron, and uh, this descends to the lower motor neurons which is located uh, either in the brainstem or in the spinal cord uh, here. and this runs to the skeletal muscle directly to innervate it this can be a alpha or a gamma type doesn't matter now just put it here. and the so-called uh, descending extra pyramidal uh, pathways because this one which is the major control of the lower motor neurons from the upper motor neuron this is the so-called pyramidal tract at the level of the uh, spinal cord the corticospinal tract otherwise the corticonuclear if this is in the uh, brainstem so lower motor neuron and uh, in uh, primates we have this direct option that is a more precise regulation, but mostly we have a regulation of the lower motor neurons from the upper via uh, interneurons. And this is an indirect way. And this is the majority of the fibers even in primates, but uh, regarding the upper limb fine tuned muscles, uh, we have this direct uh, input as well in 20-30 percent let's say but what i want to tell you is that the extra pyramidal pathways are able to influence the activity of the pyramidal at the level of the interneurons so that's why we have three major pathways from the brainstem running to this interneuron the schematic brain and why are the interneurons they are able to modulate the activity of the uh, pyramidal tract. So, this is the pyramidal tract. Including the corticospinal and corticonuclear tract. And in case of the corticospinal tract, uh, we have three descending extra pyramidal pathways. One is from the nucleus ruber, red nucleus. This pathway is called rubrospinal tract. The other is from the lateral vestibular nucleus. That is the so-called vestibulospinal or lateral vestibulospinal spinal tract. And the third one is from the reticular formation, and this is the reticular spinal tract. So these are the three major extra pyramidal pathways. Now let's see step by step uh, these pathways. The first, I like to uh, focus on the pyramidal tract, the corticospinal. It comes mostly from Brodmann 4, that is approximately. 40% of the fibers from Rodman uh, 6 and 8 we have 3 to 30% and even from the sensory area we have 30% from the fibers and uh, we will study later that they originate uh, from the fifth layer of the cortex uh, from the internal pyramidal layer and uh, what is interesting that the uh, giant pyramidal cells of bats give only max 30, uh, sorry, 3% of the fibers. And uh, you have to know in case of the pyramidal tract, the corticospinal and corticonuclear tract, the exact location. So first, uh, if we make the internal capsule, uh, this is the midline. Here we are in front, the caudate nucleus behind the uh, columns and in the concavity we are able to see the lanterns or nucleus 
Il cutaneo è solido, il cortico uh, spinal tract descends behind the genu. So let me use another color. It descends in this region. This is the cortico spinal tract. And in the genu, we have the cortico nuclear tract. So this is where the uh, two parts of the pyramidal tract descend. Then if we go down to the mesencephalon, because the internal capsule continues uh, in the course of the mesencephalon, just schematically, uh, the corticospinal tract is found in the middle of the cerebral crus. Then, if we go down to the pons, so this is the base of the pons, the fourth ventricle will be here. Wrong way to suggest briefly. Uh, the corticospinal tract doesn't descend so compact because we have pontine nuclei. And uh, that's why uh, it is located in a quite dispersed manner. That's why if we have uh, occlusion of one of the branches of the basilar artery, the site of the lesion is relatively uh, smaller compared to the other parts where the pyramidal tract is quite compact. So at the level of the pons, we have the descending pathway, so the corticospinal tract in the base. This is the level of the pons, this is the mesencephalon. And compared to the mesencephalon, where it was still compact, in the uh, pons it is uh, quite dispersed. But if we go back to the medulla oblongata, uh, let me show the closed part. This is the olea, this is the pyramid, close to the midline. And again, the Vertical spinal tract is found in a quite compact manner, and this is where 80-85% uh, of the fibers cross. And this is what I want to describe and uh, localize at the level of the spinal cord. So, uh, if I put here the uh, horizontal cut of the spinal cord again, as we did earlier. The cross corticospinal tract descends uh, not on the surface in the lateral funiculus, relatively posteriorly. So, this is called lateral corticospinal tract. This is the crossed one, so contralaterally. And we have approximately 15% of the fibers which descend. Still ipsilaterally, this is called anterior corticospinal tract. But before the termination, it crosses the midline through the anterior white commissure and then approaches the lower motor neurons. The lower motor neurons are here and here. This will be for the axial muscles and the proximal uh, extremity muscles. This one for the distal extremity muscles. So uh, the uh, anterior corticospinal tract, before it terminates, it crosses the midline. Then via interneurons, it's able to activate the axial muscles of the, uh, or the proximal muscles of the uh, extremities. The, co the lateral corticospinal tract will go to the lateral subdivision. That's why we have 80-85% of the fibers here, because the lateral subdivision of the ventral horn uh, requires uh, more precise innervation, because this is for distal fine-tuned muscles. And this is able to approach the lateral subdivision from lateral direction, again mostly through interneurons, as this option, but in case of this, we have the direct you know, regulation as well. So this is the major. 
the primary control of the <coughs> uh, lower motor neurons, which then innervate directly the skeletal muscles. Uh, what I want to add to this is that the pyramidal tract is uh, able to facilitate the flexors and inhibit uh, the extensors. Why uh, Then I like to describe the three major extrapyramidal pathways, descending extrapyramidal pathways. One is the rubrospinal tract, as I told you, uh, coming from the retinal clouds. It originates from the mesencephalon this way and uh, it crosses immediately and descends just in front of the lateral uh, corticospinal tract. So this is the rubrospinal tract and activates the flexors and inhibits the extensors. The next is the reticulospinal tract. This runs in an arch having two parts, the lateral reticular spinal tract and the anterior reticular spinal tract. First, I'd like to highlight that the reticular spinal tract is the major descending extra, extra pyramidal pathway which controls the muscle tone. And that's why it uh, terminates uh, mainly on gamma neurons, not A alpha. So, regarding these two options. So, uh, the lateral part originates from the medulla oblongata and similar to the uh, rubrospinal tract activates flexors and inhibits extensors. The anterior reticular spinal tract comes from the pons, it is uncrossed and it uh, facilitates the extensors and inhibits the flexors. So they work in an opposite way. And uh, this way I can tell you that this lateral subdivision of the descending pathways uh, are able to activate the flexors, all of them. Now let me add the uh, green one which is the vestibular spinal. The vestibular spinal descends in the anterior funiculus already. Vestibular spinal tract. And uh, it is uncrossed pathway as the uh, anterior reticular spinal. And it activates the extensors again and uh, inhibits the flexors as the anterior reticular spinal tract. So, uh, until this point, I can uh, describe a lateral descending system and the anterior descending system. The red and this part of the blue are crossed pathways and uh, activates flexor muscles. Uh, this part of the blue and the green, which are in the anterior funiculus or anterior column, uh, are uncrossed pathways and activates extensors and flexors. So these are the three major extrapyramidal pathways. In addition to these, we have a, a two other descending extra pyramidal pathways still in the anterior funiculus. We have a, a special tract here. This is the medial longitudinal fasciculus, medial longitudinal fasciculus. Uh, this pathway originates from the other three vestibular nuclei because the lateral, the vestibular spinal tract originates from the lateral vestibular nucleus. The medial longitudinal fasciculus uh, originates from the three others. And this can be either ipsilateral or contralateral and can be descending and ascending. So what you see in the spinal cord level, this is obviously the descending part which uh, uh, terminates in the cervical uh, segments, uh, activating uh, the uh, motor neurons of the cervical muscles. The ascending part, which is not in the spinal cord, will run to the uh, brainstem and uh, will uh, activate those somatomotor neurons which uh, innervate the extraocular muscles of the eye, so oculomotor, trochlear and abducens. So this pathway is able to coordinate the movement of the head to the uh, movement of the eyeball. We will study this later in the vestibular system. And the last what I want to describe is the uh, 
tectospinal tract, which is here, tectospinal tract. This originates from the tectum, it's a crossed pathway, and terminates uh, at the level of the uh, lower motor neurons. Uh, the visual part comes from the superior colliculus and uh, transmits uh, photic input to the uh, motor neurons. Partly comes from the inferior colliculus, which provides acoustic input to the uh, lower motor neurons. So, uh, when something is flying to us, and we are able to detect in the visual field, uh, from the retina, the supracolliculus receives direct input, and then from there we have the spinal tract, and that's why we are able to move the head away as a reflex-like movement, the same with the uh, acoustic input as well. In a lower vertebrae, such as the frog, it was quite interesting because uh, when uh, in the visual field of the frog there is a small object such as the uh, fly, uh, the animal is uh, moving towards the uh, target, but if uh, the uh, animal is too big, I mean uh, in the visual field, uh, the stork for example, then the frog is moving away because of the uh, alarm reaction. In human, that is rather a reflex of movement of the head when something is flying to us. In addition to this, you can see in some textbooks the oligospinal tract as well from the inferior nucleus, but in human is not proved, that's why I don't want to label it. It would be otherwise still in the anterior funiculus lateral to the vestibular spinal tract. Instead, we have spinal olivary tract, what I haven't mentioned last time among the ascending pathways, because this is regarded as part of the spinal cerebellar tracts, because it provides uh, proprioceptive input to the inferior olivary nucleus what I want to tell you uh, in the cerebellum lecture. Uh, in addition to these big descending pathways, the pyramidal tract, two parts, and the uh, descending pathways, we have, which innervate and control the lower motor neurons, somatomotor motor neurons. We have some other pathways descending in the remaining part of the lateral funiculus, which uh, uh, modulate the activity of the visceral motor neurons if we have. So, for example, uh, in the thoracic part and the upper lumbar part of the spinal cord between T1 and L2, where we have the sympathetic outflow, or between S2 and S4, where we, where we have the parasympathetic outflow, they are also under control. And uh, the hypothalamus is the major vegetative center, so it's logic that from there we have a descending pathway to these uh, nerve cells not labeled in my drawing. This pathway is called hypothalamus spinal tract. And we have also monominergic pathways, descending monominergic pathways, including serotoninergic pathway from rafe nuclei of the brainstem. We have noradrenergic pathway from the locus cerulose of the brainstem. And we have dopaminergic pathway from the uh, ventral tegmental area, also uh, from the brainstem. Thank you very much.